Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting program. And today what we're going to do is extend a theme from last week. Um, last week we talked about scheduled tasks um, and Windows event logs for finding those. This week we're going to dive into process creation and termination. You know, when you think about process creation and termination, this is the critical part of every process's lifestyle, whether it be good, you know, an expected process on the machine, or whether it be malware itself. And so today what we're going to look at is how you can track mainly creation and deletion events and why they're important to threat hunting. So let's hop right into it. So process creation and termination events, right? So this is another one that's part of Windows Advanced Security Audit Policy. Um, this is also one to where the events 4688 and 4689, um, they fall into the detailed tracking category, and these are not enabled by default. And so if you go around and you're going into a threat hunt thinking, hey, I'll look for 4688 for creations, 4689s for deletions, unless it's enabled by group or local policy, it's not going to be in the Windows event logs. And so this is one that's really important, whether you're going into an environment to recommend an architecture change or something they should have enabled, this one, you know, you definitely should consider enabling and you're going to tune it, need to tune it right because some of these events might be a little loud, um, but these are really, really powerful events for threat hunting. So how you enable these, um, you know, if you were, if you watched last week's very similar process this week, if you're new this week to it, what you do is there's the local security policy if you're just doing it on one machine. If you go to the start menu, you can search for local security policy. Um, you'll see here kind of the icon that you see there on the left. From there, you can go down into the, you see the right image pop up and you'll see the advanced audit policy configuration and under there detailed tracking. And about halfway down detailed tracking, you have the process creation and termination. And within those settings, you can have it log both on success and on failure. Um, this local security policy is what you do if you're doing it only to one machine or the machine's not domain joined. You can also do this via group policy and that's the preferred way, particularly if you're dealing with the domain. Again, if you're dealing with the domain, you wanna make sure you push it out to the boxes you expect. You don't want you know, these Windows event logs to blow way out of proportion, especially if you have a lot of applications or processes starting or stopping. Um, so tuning may be necessary, but when you're enabling these, this is how you do it. And again, I really want to foot stomp. This is not enabled by default. And so if you want to include this in your threat hunt, you know, definitely go in and enable it, whether it be locally or on the domain. So starting with 4688, this is generated on process creation. And what's nice with it is we get the account info of who initiated it. We get the subject account info so we can see you know, who the process is actually running over. We get the process name, the command line, the path. If there's a domain there, that goes with the process name and the security level. And actually, if you go to Microsoft's page that documents 4688, that documents this event, you know, what they recommend on monitoring is things like, hey, look for those high value domain or local accounts, right? Look for kind of the anomalies of account usage out of working hours. Look for usage of disabled accounts, right? Did someone start a process under a disabled account? Um, you know, look for accounts using processes outside of their specified role, right? Or accounts using, you know, external or external accounts, right? Some of these might be started um, externally through WMI or other mechanisms. You know, look for atypical account names, right? And really restricted or unusual computer usage there. You know, when we look at threat hunts too, you could also look for process name being things like Mimi Cats. You look could look for execution out of, you know, temp directories, you know, really depending on what you're looking for in a threat hunt, there is a lot of utilization for 4688 events. This is really powerful. This again, like we said, you might need to tune it right depending on the box you're on, um, but 4688 is definitely one to look for. So 4689, 4688 was creation, 4689 is termination. Here we get a little less information. So we get the domain, we get the process ID, we get the account name, process name. Um, exit status could be interesting, right? Did I um, application report that it and exited gracefully or did it exit with an error? 
Um, you know, there might be some interesting analytics that you add in a hunt, depending on the context of the process you're looking at. Um, but again, the recommended monitoring from Microsoft here is, you know, look at changes to the process name um, since creation, right? Um, if you start with the process ID and if you're tracking the lifestyle, life cycle of that process, a 4689 event compared to a 4688, if you were to look at the difference between the two of them, you could look for things like, hey, was there a change to a process name? Do I suggest that someone somehow tampered with this process along the way? Um, you could look for things like process not being in the standard folder, right? Um, we talked about known and malicious, known malicious process names like Mimi Cats or, you know, if you don't expect PS exec on a box or to be run by a certain user, you could look for PS exec, right? Exiting by a user that really shouldn't use it. Um, or critical processes exiting, right? If you're doing more of a threat hunt or you're doing an incident response case and you're trying to figure out, hey, why did this marine or, or why did this machine or application crash? You know, you can begin by looking at critical processes exiting there. So again, you know, this was a quicker Tech Talk Tuesday, but what we wanted to talk to you today about was really process creation and termination. We wanted to talk about, you know, how to enable it, why you should enable it, how it's useful for threat hunting and how it's useful for IR, um, and then walk through really how the two events look. Um, so hopefully this helped you out and we hope to see you back next week. Thanks a lot.